Okay. Uh, my name is Sarah Trujillo, and today I want to talk to you guys about WebGL, a whirlwind tour. So why WebGL? If you've ever used a graphics or rendering library, maybe you've been sitting there and you're making cool shapes, and you're like, this is great, and all of a sudden you're like, what is WebGL? I have no idea. Um, so to understand what WebGL is, we first have to understand something called OpenGL. So in the 1980s and the early 1990s, um, software was being developed with different interfaces for specific graphics hardware, and this was kind of an issue. Uh, there was an open standard at the time, but this company called SGI was like, hey, we have this proprietary, proprietary system called IrishGL. So let's take IrishGL and let's strip out anything that's not graphics related, including uh, like keyboard input, mouse input, windowing, and let's just make that available to everyone. So in 1992, OpenGL was uh, born. <laughs> So OpenGL is a low-level API for graphics rendering, and it's written in C. It has language bindings in C, C++, Fortran, uh, Java, <laughs> and it interacts with the GPU to do hardware accelerated rendering, and it also makes graphics operating system and windowing system free. Okay, so what is hardware accelerated rendering? Um, so on our computers, we have a GPU, and the CPU. So the CPU is really fast, uh, but maybe it doesn't have so many cores. And the GPU, if you're talking about clock cycles, is a little slower, but it has all these cores. So the GPU can take data, and it takes it in in parallel, and it just pumps it out, and it can do this really fast. Um, and this makes it really good at certain things. So some examples, it's really good at three-dimensional matrix arithmetic, multiplying a lot of floating point numbers. So it's really just better at the CPU, uh, at graphics-related tasks. So you're probably wondering, that's cool, but how does this have to do with the browser? Um, and that's where WebGL comes in. So WebGL is a derivative of OpenGL. It comes from this ES 2.0, and it's an API wrapped in JavaScript. So it gives us uh, OpenGL in the browser with the hardware acceleration. So uh, I found that implementing WebGL was pretty involved. So this is kind of my not entirely accurate, but simplified recipe for WebGL. So you have to make a window in context for rendering, you have to give it data, and then you have to make like a small program for the GPU. Um, so to make a window, you're like, hey, HTML, I need a window. OK, so you set up this canvas element, and you give it an ID, which you're going to reference later. And then you go to JavaScript, and you create some context. So here you'll see an initialization function and it grabs the canvas by that ID, and then it tells the canvas, I would like to use WebGL here, thank you. Uh, so from here, you need to create a little program for the GPU, and WebGL expects, it's a little updated now, it expects two things, vector shader and fragment shader, which are just small programs that determine how light something is, how dark something is, where something is. Um, there's also now a geometry shader, but we don't need it for our purposes today. Uh, and these are written in GLSL. Um, so the vertex shader. The vertex shader kind of gives positions for things. Uh, it tells WebGL, hey, I want to make these primitives, which are the building blocks of larger, more complicated shapes. And it looks kind of like this. Uh, this is GLSL. You'll see it has an attribute that's kind of like a parameter in JavaScript. Uh, VEC2, which tells it I'm expecting two floats. Uh, and then I'll take it and put it in this vector shader function. We can also write this in JavaScript, like so. This is, uh, I did an ES6 because it does expect line breaks. Um, yeah. So the fragment shader determines the colors for every pixel. And it really just looks a lot like the vertex shader. Uh, this is RGB with an alpha. And here it is in ES6. Um, so just to give you a visual of what's going on back here, it's something like this. So you have a vertex shader, and then you assemble the shape. 
you rasterize it, uh, you put it through a fragment shader, and then you get this golden triangle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I just want to show you guys briefly what all this looks like. So I'll zoom it in in a minute, but on this side you'll see it's a really basic HTML. You'll just see the canvas. And then, um, uh, OK. Here you'll see some JavaScript, and that's our initialization function. Um, a lot of it you've seen. There's the setting up the context. Um, we're giving it data on line 18. Um, yeah, and then uh, setting up our vertex shaders. Let me just go down here. So let me keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, we set up our program for the GPU on line 48. And we have 69 lines of code. And I'll show you what this makes. Uh, this makes a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, why would I do this? So <laughs> in WebGL, like, say you're making a thousand triangles. Um, so you could actually give it a bunch of data and then just reuse like so many lines of that code. That's the program for the GPU. So it actually uses reuses a lot of the code. Um, okay, and just to give you an example of something slightly more interesting you could do with this than this triangle you could do something like this cube. Um, yeah, and that's just a brief look into WebGL, and that's it. Okay. <laughs>